Hello everyone, my name is Sears. Uh, I'm from uh, Leeds United Kingdom. Uh, we're reporting uh, from uh, the ACR 21 Convergence Conference on behalf of the Room Now. Uh, today, uh, I am uh, delighted uh, to be joined uh, by our as in the guest speaker, so uh, Dr. April George. Hi, April. Hi. <laughs> Well. Uh, first and foremost, uh, congratulations uh, for your two oral presentations at this conference. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. And um, so uh, April um, earlier presented uh, her study on behalf of her co-authors on the association of uh, hydroxychloroquine uh, and uh, the risk of uh, lupus flares, the abstract um, number 1462. So April, um, could you tell us um, the background of the studies? Yes, um, so you know, hydroxychloroquine is a really important medication for patients with lupus in particular and with other rheumatic diseases as well. Um, but there's been some controversy about what is the correct dose you know, to use for this, um, of, the, of the right dose of that medication to use in lupus treatment because um, there has been, there have been several studies looking at a, a dose of higher than five milligrams per kilogram per day being associated with a higher risk of retinopathy, which is a long-term eye toxicity. Um, and in terms of the benefits, you know, for lupus patients, there really is limited data on what the necessary dose is to achieve all of the positive benefits of the, of the medication, because we know that hydroxychloroquine is associated with less flares, less renal damage, even improved survival, maybe less thromboses, perhaps even improvements in metabolic um, effects. So there are a lot of benefits, but like the dose needed to achieve that is not um, super clear. And then, you know, in the, since there's been a heightened concern about retinopathy in the last several years, I, people were seeing a trend, people using lower doses of the medication. So basically our hypothesis was, would there be a higher risk of lupus flares if we use a lower dose of this medication, perhaps, you know, try, to try to minimize toxicity? Yes, uh, certainly. So that's an uh, interesting question that, you know, we need to address. Uh, you know, it's uh, easy to say, right, you should use lower doses, but then what will be the effect if we use such practice, isn't it? Uh, so um, could you please uh, summarize your key results from your presentation today? Yeah, so this was a case crossover study, you know, so each patient is serves as his or her own control, but, and we looked at the exposure of um, low dose hydroxychloroquine, which is really anything less than 400 milligrams per day versus like a standard 400 milligram per day dose. Um, we looked at the difference in exposure and then the association with the risk of lupus flare. Um, and we within like the low dose group, we subdivided that into like a moderately low, which is usually around 300 milligrams a day, but could have been between 300 to less than 400. And then a lowest dose group that's like usually 200 milligrams per day, but less than 300 milligrams. Um, and we found that lower doses of hydroxychloroquine were associated with a higher risk of lupus flares. Um, and, um, basically that was seen for, you know, overall low, low dose category. It was also seen within like the lowest dose category and the moderately low dose category. Um, we didn't yet look at a weight-based, um, exposure definition, like saying if you took less than five milligrams per kilogram per day, but you have a higher risk of lupus flare. Um, I think that is something we should look into, but we did look at, um, based on people with like a lower body weight still taking the lowest dose range of hydroxychloroquine was associated with a higher risk of flare versus people who weigh 80 kilograms or more, meaning that 400 milligrams itself would be less than five mg per kg. Really any dose less than 400 milligrams um, was associated with a higher risk of flare. Okay, that's very interesting. So just to recap, so um, anyone, you know, equal, um, weight equal or more than 80 kilogram, any lower than you know, um, in the 400 milligram dose, you have increased risk of flare. Uh, and you know, people who weighs uh, under 80 kilogram, so is the dose below 300 milligram that actually confers increased risk of flares, right? That's really interesting. So um, I do understand that you know, yesterday, uh, you know, you gave a talk about uh, increased dose, higher doses is associated with uh, retinal toxicity. Uh, however, now the, you know, the low dose is associated with flare. So how do we put this thing together for clinical practice? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And I think about that question all the time um, because, um, you know, we did find in our study of hydroxychloroquine retinopathy, you know, the higher dose is associated or the lower doses have a lower risk of retinopathy, the higher doses do have a higher risk of retinopathy. Um, I'm not sure that there is like across the board one like safe 
an effective dose. I think it's going to come down to individual patient um, decision making and balancing the risks and benefits. I think you know there might be some patients who um, like their lupus is active and they really do need a higher dose of hydroxychloroquine at least for some period of time. And if you just monitor them closely, like maybe there are appropriate times where you need to use a higher dose. But um, I think you also have to keep in mind the long-term exposure of this medication um, when you're making that decision and definitely discuss the risks and benefits with the patient. That's really fantastic, April. Um, you know, we're really grateful that you're joining us. So um, I hope that will be useful for everyone at room now. Uh, and thank you and uh, enjoy um, the rest of the conference. Thank you, you too.